All right, now you guys clicked on this link because you want to know the five things you need to head on down to Baja. So let's just cut right to it. No fluff, no filler. Here it is. You need a passport. You need Mexico vehicle insurance. You need pet vaccinations. You need proof of vehicle ownership. And you need what's called a Mexican tourist card. That's it. All right, now let's go through a little bit of detail on each of those. <laughs> Why would you want to go down to Baja? Well, Baja represents to many true adventure. It's an evolution in your overlanding lifestyle, and it's a great way, if you're in North America, to cross international borders and go to a truly remote location. It's fairly accessible, and it's fairly easy to do. One of the things that we always say is that adventure is necessary. Adventure requires you going outside of your comfort zone. And to many, taking the leap to go across the border, go down into Baja, hang out in the remote wilderness and come back, represents something that is outside of the comfort zone. But if you do a little bit of planning, it's not that tough and soon you'll be a Baja pro. So let's talk about those items and how you obtain them. So now at the end of this video, I am going to go over some do's and don'ts and other tips for you to take your first trip down there to Baja. So stay tuned for that. Okay, number one, passport. You guys can do a search online, figure out how to give your passport. Give yourself plenty of time. Six weeks is a good time frame. You can expedite a passport. It's just a little bit more expensive. Now, the Mexican tourist card, I'll have a link down in the description of this video for the website you can go to to obtain one. It's about $24. It's not expensive. You do need one. Links below. Your Mexican vehicle insurance. It has to be Mexican vehicle insurance. Again, there's going to be a link in the description. We love a website called Baja Bound. We also like the name. Uh, see what I did there? Uh, that link will be in the description. <laughs> That link will be in the description. Baja Bound, you can obtain your Mexican vehicle insurance from that link and you need to have it. Your insurance will not work. If you have a financed vehicle, then you need to check with the lien holder what their rules are in terms of taking your vehicle across international borders and make sure that you adhere to those rules so that you know you're covered should something happen south of the border. I'm also going to have a link to pet vaccination information in the description. If you're traveling there with a pet, you need to be able to show that your pet is vaccinated and that needs to be current. It's within 120 days of your trip to Baja. So make sure that you get your pet vaccinations as well. You need to prove that you own the vehicle that you're traveling in. If you're asked, you want to be able to Bring out your paperwork and show that in fact you do own the vehicle. Now, all of this paperwork is highly valuable. What you want to do is you want to make copies of everything and put it in a clear Ziploc so that if you are stopped at the border and you are asked for your paperwork, you can hand them copies of the paperwork. If they ask for originals, then you're going to produce the originals and you're going to give it to them, but that won't be your default way to approach it. Just hand them the paperwork. If they ask for something specifically like proof of vehicle registration, just give them that. Everyone's going to be really polite and they'll tell you what you need to provide. In our trips to Baja, have we ever been asked for our paperwork? I showed up at that border with my packet in hand and passports ready to just hanging out the window and like they just looked at us and went just bye no <laughs> we've come through in fact going through the border we've just been waved through and we've driven right down through to Baja but if you are asked you absolutely want to be able to present the proper paperwork so have it organized have copies be prepared to show it. All right, let me let me hit some uh, popular questions that I get asked. Is it safe? Well, 
This depends on your level of comfort. I can tell you that 45 minutes away from Overland Bound HQ, there are places that I feel way less comfortable in than any place in Baja. So for me, I have never felt unsafe. You do have to be aware of your surroundings. It's pretty common sense stuff. Uh, phone reception, that's ah, spotty. Here and there, if you go in really remote destinations, you're not gonna have reception. It's just like here in the United States, most of the places you have reception, but you go far enough off the grid and you're not gonna have it. The terrain, do I need a four wheel drive? Absolutely not. <laughs> you can go from here all the way down to Cabo San Lucas and back and stay on fairly decent roads. You could probably do it in a Prius. However, you can go way off the beaten path where a four wheel drive is absolutely necessary. And if you wanna see those great remote destinations, then you wanna have a four wheel drive vehicle that's capable of going through the sand. A uh, rear locker is gonna help out a whole bunch in high speed sand situations, but you do not require a four wheel drive to go down to San Felipe and back. It's not required, it depends on the kind of trip that you want. Where do we cross? This is what I recommend for your first shakedown going through Baja. If you can't get a lot of time off and you don't have a lot of vacation time, you can do a fairly quick trip down to Baja depending on where you are in the States. I recommend going across at the Mexicali border because there is a lot less drama. If you're in a party mood, you can go across in Tijuana, myself, I like everything to be nice and easy, and Mexicali tends to be a very good place to cross the border. Now here are some do's and don'ts. You cannot bring firearms into Mexico. Do not even mess with it. Now, in the United States, a lot of us were raised on a farm, we grew up in the country, and we see a firearm as a tool that might be used when you're out in the wild. You cannot bring that with you. Again, that might shove you outside your comfort zone, but it is a non-starter. If you have or you are caught with a firearm, the consequences are extremely high. Do your own research. Also, vegetables and fruits and things of that nature, you cannot bring fruits and vegetables across the border. You can bring a lot of other things. I'll have links in the description for things that you can take in and out of Mexico uh, with your packing. But basically, dry goods and cheeses, things of that nature are safe bets. You may wanna plan for dry goods and purchase things in Mexico if you wanna have a barbecue. What about gas? Well, plan ahead. Uh, in Mexico, you might see a gas station on one of the maps that you download, but uh, there may or may not be gas at that location. So it's a good idea to have, you know, an extra five or 10 gallons, but typically you'll be able to get between gas stations on a single tank of gas. Just do a little bit of planning. Now, what about navigation and maps? You're going to be offline from time to time in Baja. So what you want to do is go to Google Maps and download the map for offline use. You're able to do that. Just make sure that you download it within 30 days of your trip because Google Maps requires you to refresh it every 30 days. Now in the future, uh, Overland Bound later on this year is gonna have offline maps available in our app that's coming up and that will be Overland specific resources and information. So stay tuned for that. What about the checkpoints? You are gonna come across checkpoints and you wanna know the phrase Lo siento, no habla español, unless you happen to speak Spanish. If you say that, then it's frustrating for them, but they'll nod and they'll indicate whether they want you to step out of the vehicle and open up the back so that they can see what you have. That can happen. When we go down, we probably get out of the vehicle and show what we have in the vehicle a couple of times, maybe three times, so that does happen. Just everybody's polite. No, you don't bribe them. Just be polite and do what they say. They are in charge and you are visiting their country. Be polite, they'll be polite in return and you'll be on your way soon enough. Where do you stay? Uh, pretty much anywhere you want. The beaches in Baja are public. You can go and stay on any beach. Now, if you're in a remote area where you're watching your vehicle all the time and there isn't a lot of people, 
you're going to be fairly safe. You can have your things on the outside of the vehicle. You can sleep next to your vehicle. That's no problem. If you're in a populated area with your expensive overland gear, you're going to want to keep it in a, an enclosed area. And so you're going to want to do a little bit of planning to find out who can safely store your vehicle if you're going to go out on the town or be separated from your vehicle for any duration of time. It's pretty much the same in the United States. You wouldn't leave your vehicle downtown for an extended period of time. So you just exercise the same common sense. What kind of a permit do I need for my vehicle? You do not require a permit to have your vehicle in Baja driving the entire length of the peninsula. You need your Mexican vehicle insurance to cover your valuable vehicle, but that is it. In terms of places to go, this is you designing the kind of trip that you want to have. Is it a strictly off-grid adventure? Do you want to be uh, alone in the most remote areas? Or do you want to go to Cabo San Lucas and some of the more populated areas? The wine country in the northern part of Baja is absolutely amazing. So you're going to need to design your own trip. That might be the subject of another video. This is focused on absolutely what you need and let's keep the comments going. If you guys have a question, some of the things specifically that I may have faced in Baja, just ask your questions in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them. We recommend going down together with a few vehicles and if you want to do that, of course, that's what Overland Bound is all about. Our community will connect you with the resources to go down, connect with other members, plan a trip, and you can have three or four rigs going down there together. Go on over to overlandbound.com and check us out. Lots of free resources over there. All right, you guys, hey, thank you very much. Adventure is necessary. We'll see you in the next video.